Would you try this isopod ramen from Taiwan or is it just reinforcing negative Asian stereotypes? Yeah, this is going viral right now for $48, Andrew. You can go to Taiwan and get isopod ramen. I can imagine they're like, this is not a very common lanxie. This is a very special lanxie. Ramen. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, can I get the... Uh... Can I get the new ramen that you have, the ISO pod ramen with the whole pod on top? Yeah, I've got to crack the shell. Of course, once this hit Western internet platforms, Andrew, the comment section exploded. Asians are weird. Some people said, nah, this is no different from a lobster. You got arguments all around the spectrum. We're going to get into some comments and, of course, our takeaways. Andrew, is this too stereotypical or is it just tasty and Asians are just going by Asian cultural standards? Man, honestly, I think a lot of Asians don't even think that the weird seafood stereotype minus obviously some of the negative animals that have uh, Asians have been accused of eating. But I would say aside from that, I don't think Asians really take this weird seafood stereotype as negative. Yeah, it is. I mean, even me, I have to say I have a very Asian sensor for things. This is pushing the limit of looks wise, but I heard that it literally an isopod just tastes like a mixture of crab and lobster and even its guts just tastes like crab head. All right, well, let's get into the comment section. Um, By the way, Andrew, I know you like to fo uh, follow this Japanese chef on YouTube who, who Hi likes to cook Yuki Hiroyuki Tarada out in Florida, I think. He eats a lot. He cooks a lot of weird food. He has a 10 million view uh, video cooking isopod fried rice. Multiple isopod recipes. The first comment was like, this is disgusting, man. This is a 12 out of 10 on the scale. I can't believe it. Um, but is this really that disgusting? Or is it no different, Andrew, than if you are an Asian family, specifically a coastal one, eating just the crab head? Yo, dude, I think... To be honest, one of the underrated weird things is sea urchin, uni. Like, you don't understand, that comes from like a poisonous, spiky ball. But for some reason, somebody picked it up, cracked it open, was like, oh yeah, like uh, we should eat this orange pot of it, yeah. Somebody said, uh, man, Americans need to get out more. They only try chicken, beef, and pork. Americans only know three types of protein. Most middle Americans don't even eat seafood unless it's a fish stick. <laughs> well, I guess uh, they wouldn't have a middle America voice because this is, this is from somebody not from the middle of America right. accusing them. Uh, do you think this is true? Uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, overall, I would say Americans, are like a lot of Americans, not all Americans, but a lot of Americans' diet is pretty, like, pretty narrow. Pretty processed, I yeah. would say. Surprisingly narrow, considering how open-minded America is often about other issues that other countries are narrow-minded about. That's Somebody said, well, people in the South eat weird things. Um, obviously, people in the South are famous for eating alligator, you know what I mean? Especially in Florida, bull testicles. Um Gator meat, like no, we said, all types dude, of things. Dude, if you go to Florida, I'm sure somebody is eating every single type of animal down Somebody there. said that lobsters used to be considered low class in the Western world, yeah. Andrew. They were fed to prisoners all throughout the 1800s. Into the 1900s, there was new packaging technology that allowed people inland to start sampling how delicious the lobsters were. And the lobster increasingly rose up the hierarchy to the point now where a lobster is no cheaper than $50, $60 when you go out to the Western American restaurants. Yeah, my main criticism of eating the isopod is that I don't think it gives you a lot of meat for the weight. Like, there's a lot of shell in there, you know what I mean? And that meat is not that plentiful considering how big the isopod is. So you probably got to pay hundreds of dollars for the isopod, at least $100 for it. And then, you know, you get like, what, a crab full? Do you think it's like an increasing spectrum, Andrew, where at one point the crab was not accepted? That gets accepted because, you know, it looks weird, but not too weird. Then you get to the crab. And then some people nowadays eat horseshoe crab, but that's still a crustacean. But they're like, don't you species jump to the isopods? Because the isopods technically is a different subspecies, you know, has a different exoskeleton scientific yeah, yeah, yeah. structure than a crustacean. It, it, it is related to the roly-poly pill bug. So that that is... So so are we being mm -hmm. specious now? Is that the thing? If people need to tell me if it's an isopod crustacean distinction and that's the reality of it, they need to say it. I'm just saying we need to stay consistent with what we're grossed out about. Somebody said a $48 ramen and you get a gigantic cockroach sitting on top to the side, man. <laughs> and then, of course, people had all these uh, photos. You know, you've got uh, Metroid, Samus Iran. You got Starship Troopers. You got all types of stuff. Uh, I would say that for a lot of people... Uh, the media has made like giant bugs and like these things like kind of humanized them or I guess made them more like monsters where generally if you had never seen these movies, yeah, you might think the isopod was kind of weird looking, but 
It's 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 a really a lot of the media. There's it's a lot something of the media. in America, Andrew, that very has ultra strict standards because if even if you go down to Mexico, for example, eating fried crickets is not uncommon. No, oh, but very in America, common. people are like, dude, you tried it. You're a, a defiled person. Um, somebody said, man, these Asians will eat anything, man. And someone said, yeah. And then they get mad when you question their culture. And someone said, this is gonna launch COVID Ultra Pro Max 25. <laughs> I mean, what do you think about this stereotype from the West, obviously, that people in the East will eat anything, particularly from the ocean, but I'd say specifically, really just anything. I I think, unfortunately, the fact that or the belief that COVID came from eating like a weird, rare meat, I think does kind of hurt it. it. It does make it sound more bad that you're eating a rare meat. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, from an outsider perspective, I can understand why people are like, can you stop eating the weird stuff? Because last time you guys ate weird stuff. And first of all, a lot of cultures eat weird stuff, by the way. So right. you can make this comment no, no, no. about a lot of I people. I can totally understand from a Western perspective. However, mad cow disease, Andrew, that literally developed from just feeding cows cows in the in the cow feed unknowingly creating prions in their brain anyway guys like i said there's a lot of counter examples but i can get it immediately on surface level totally logical from a western perspective somebody said what when is panda express introducing orange isopod huh or general so's isopod that's pretty funny man um somebody said it's all about status in east asia people just want to eat the rarest most expensive deep sea ultra deep sea critters that they can get to flex on each other yeah that's true you know what i mean even if you took a kid to like a fish farm and then you took a salmon and you squeezed all the caviar out of that salmon i think the kid would be like what are you doing and then it's just caviar but andrew there was also people arguing like People like to do in the comments section of anything, Andrew. People saying, what about in France, Andrew? There's caviar, foie gras, ortolan, Andrew, which is a small pigeon-like bird that is being hunted almost to the brink of disti- uh, extinction in France because people love to eat it so much. Oh, well, you know, in France, we like the little birds. Well, may- maybe my great-great-great-grandfather's from France and Louisiana, but that ain't me anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Last but not least, Andrew, somebody said any country that eats this kind of food will be around for a very long time because they know that everything on this earth is food. If it swims, walks, flies, you name it, it can be food to someone. Even humans are food to animals. Wake up and learn, people. Yeah, yeah, I I think that that's like a pretty balanced perspective at the end of the day. And also there was one last comment that said that uh, like... Back after the Vietnam War had ended, a lot of people were catching these isopods in Vietnam and throwing them back because they looked weird. But my dad caught five of them and cooked them, and they were delicious, and I'm so glad I got to eat them for free before they got expensive. (laughs) Listen, guys. Culture changes and culture is different. Well, right? also, it's about necessity, man. Anyways, guys, David, uh, what's your overall takeaway? Because I feel like um, every several months, there is a new viral news article about Asians eating something that looks weird. Right. You're Doesn't talking about, weird. You're talking it, about whether it's the weird breakfast ramens uh, that taste like pancake syrup and eggs and things like that. That's weird on an ultra-refined process level. This is literally something you can just catch in the ocean. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess for me... I definitely see where the Western people are coming from, but for me, I would try it. You know what? I'd rather people eat isopods in ramen than make a bunch of prank videos terrorizing the public population. Like I real like I just think that a lot of people and I and I and bringing it to something that's outside of the food world for a second. It's like I think people's like gauge of what is so offensive and needs to get regulated is so goofy sometimes where they're like, "Oh yeah, like all this other stuff that's happening, it doesn't really bother me. But then you eat a weird shell animal from the sea, and now I'm weirded out. But I think it's because it's like, you know what it is. Like, let's say, for example, there's a mass shooting, a mass school shooting. You understand that because it's almost become a part of American culture. Whereas eating an isopod's like, you're bringing the alien invasion straight to us. Because you're going to eat the baby aliens, and then the big old isopods is going to come through, flying through the sky, just like Thanos, and destroy us all. You know what I mean? There's an element of weirdness or exoticness or, like, this is of an other world. Yeah. My question to everybody out there is... Do you think this weird food stereotype of Asians is negative? Is it really bad? Or to some extent, do we as Asians, as proud Asians, have to say, yeah, we do eat some stuff that you probably wouldn't eat, but it's good and it's not hurting anybody? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that this Taiwanese um, ramen restaurant didn't need to do this, but if it does, I'm rocking with it. Like, hey. I'm not going against it. There's a lot worse things that you could be doing for the clout in the ground. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comment section below, Andrew. There was a lot of comments saying that Asians were Klingons or maybe we were Nemoidians. They eat weird things and grubs, and you know, Jabba the Hutt and all this like Star Wars related thing. But at the end of the day, do Asians need to change who they are and their cultures? You know, they don't have as much Abrahamic religions over there that like put all these restrictions on food and things like that. Plus, the waters are just way more exotic. You know, as we discover more about the deep sea ocean, I can only imagine that maybe in 20 years there's something else that pops up that's kind of weird. Looking. I'm just saying in 20, 30 years, guys, don't be coming around being like, oh my gosh, this isopod's delicious. All right, everybody. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.